Well, as we're running into market opening, let's uh, welcome our next guest in, Pirosha Godrej, MD and CEO of Godrej Properties. Uh, Pirosha, thanks for joining us this morning. Now, you would be hearing some of the calls that are coming in. There's tremendous interest in real estate stocks, which is back in the market. But you tell us what's happening on ground. Is demand actually picking up in all the geographies that you are in? I think um, real estate demand, particularly in the residential space, uh, for uh, uh, projects that are well located and are priced appropriately, we think has always been there and will always be there in, in the Indian market. I think we've been very encouraged uh, by the response our Gurgaon project received clearly. We're very optimistic about the response this project we're launching. Uh, which is called Godridge E-City and is, is an electronic city in Bangalore. We're very encouraged about the response this project will receive as well. Already before the official launch, we've been able to sell almost 100 apartments in, in this project. So I think, um, you know, we, we do see things at a reasonable level already. But certainly with some of the reformist measures uh, the government has been introducing recently um, and with our expectation that there will be some easing of monetary policy over the next 6 to 12 months, I think there is absolutely uh, further reason to be optimistic about the, the prospects over the next one year. I do think overall the data we've seen suggests that uh, volumes are down. Uh, in most cities across uh, the country and I think uh, although there, for, for good projects there has been a reasonable response, I think this could be even better um, once general economic sentiments improve. Okay, uh, just one second. Uh, let me ask that question. Samina was asking it. I think there's an issue with the mic. Pirosha, very quickly, uh, your inventory situation right now, are you still sitting on unsold inventory or uh, is everything almost getting into the market? Uh, yes, you know, of course, we don't, we, having some inventory is actually a good thing in, in real estate. You don't want to necessarily sell everything you have um, immediately. For example, even though in Gurgaon we sold our entire first phase in a single day, uh, we do have another phase of the project which we would like to sell more gradually to make sure we further improve uh, margins in the project. So in almost all our projects, we do have uh, some amount of inventory. Um, I think the last two months have been good in that we've had some very successful launches, but that is more from the fact that we were able to get these projects launched than any huge change in, in market sentiment. We, we've been maintaining that even over the last uh, six, eight months, we've been able to see uh, reasonably good volumes um, in our residential developments, even in the first quarter of this financial year, which is a very weak uh, period for the economy in this Pirusha, give us a few minutes, we'll come right back to you. I'm just going to quickly address market opening. It is Friday, it is expected to be a sort of very busy day of trade. Lots of earnings to watch out for, lots of earnings reactions rather, is what we will be keeping an eye for. 30 points off on the Sensex. Global queues, remember, were quite subdued. We did manage to pull back quite well in the last hour of trade yesterday. So these kind of losses are more or less on expected lines. The breath is looking a little shaky to me and that is what I'm going to pick up on first. A lot more red than green on today's screen, but that seems very, very typical in the last couple of days to be very honest. In terms of the big movers and shakers, you've got uh, Bharti to watch out for. This stock is going to be under pressure and it is under pressure. 1.5% off after what came out of the EGOM. So again a regulatory hurdle for Bharti. This isn't the end of the game but of course the stock is sulking this morning. Nearly 2% lower on Bharti is what we are picking up as we gear up for trade this morning. ITC, watch out for this one. Earnings are expected in a couple of hours. Stock is trading quiet. Remember, it is the most valuable stock on the Sensex. Whether or not it's going to surprise us on the upside is going to be a factor to watch out for. For now, it is the stock is trading quiet, but it did run up nearly a percent and a half in yesterday's trade. Apart from that, Reliance Industries that did a beautiful pullback in the last 20 minutes yesterday is down about six tenths of percent as we speak right now. Well, you've got TCS ahead of its numbers. A little nervous as well, eight tenths of percent off on TCS. We are expecting a decent set of numbers. There could be some amount of margin contraction. The management commentary will be crucial. And remember, TCS so far has outperformed its peers such as Intersys in the last couple of quarters and that's expected to continue in this quarter as well. Take a look at banks because Bank Nifty was up nearly 2% yesterday. It was massive outperformance coming from banking stocks. Today as well, you've got SPI, HDFC, HDFC Bank seeing profit booking emerging. ICSC, a bank, though surprisingly, is still trading in positive territory. Now, gains are not too large, but nevertheless still positive as we speak right now. Metal stocks are taking a break. Auto stocks not getting up to too much action. Zipline, Dr. Reddy's is seeing some buying. So those funds are holding out. 
BHEL and LNT were both quite active in yesterday's trade. LNT was up almost 2% yesterday, now down 6 tenths of percent, giving up half of its gains from yesterday. BHEL on the other hand continues to trade positive. So that's the screen. It's almost an expected line. Stocks that ran up very sharply yesterday are seeing profit picking emerging in today's trade. Pull up the Nifty and let's see what's going on there. I'm hoping that 5700 mark has been respected and it has. 16 points off on the Nifty, pretty much in line with what the pre-open was indicating too. The breadth is a little weak, so there's a clear bias on the downside. You've got about 36 stocks that are losing for about 10 to 15 stocks that are gaining. Bharti is your top loser on back of that uh, outcome of that ego meet yesterday. Kotak Mahindra Bank is looking a little weak. M&M, remember there was a downgrade coming from Credit Suisse early this week. I think the stock hasn't still gotten over that. The stock trades 8 tenths of percent lower. HDFC Bank seeing some profit booking in RIL as well after a good run up yesterday is a little step due today. Ambuja Cement numbers were well about what the street was expecting. Stock gets a thumbs up, is up 1%. ACC as well numbers were much better than what we actually numbers were in line with the street expectation. Stock is still up 1%. Ripper's March Nihai was the only loser from the IT pack yesterday. Dr. Reddy's is not doing too bad and ITC is gearing up ahead of its numbers up nearly half a percent as we speak. So Subhi, that's the day 5700 is being respected. I think it's on more or less an expected line so it's going to be all about earnings and specific stocks I'm guessing today. Yeah, if you want a stock stock on earnings this morning it's got to be Gujarat and Ari Coke. Just look at the reaction on the number. Uh, profits have doubled, their sales are up well over 20 odd percent and their Australian subsidiary is now shipping lots of coal. Some of the uh, data that we've got, output data is very impressive and look at the stock go 12% higher in early trade. There's some pressure on Indian hotels building in, concern about how they'll fund this 1.8 billion acquisition of Orient Express hotels if they decide to do so. Stocks under pressure. Uh, Tata Global Beverages, we're talking about Starbucks opening up. It's, it's great news but of course for the stock it's pretty much all in the price. Some of the other names that stand out, DB Realty started making its early move uh, all over again. <clears throat> Let's look at Talwarkas as well. That was the other set of good results that came in, persistent systems and tell workers and both the stocks have been holding up in positive territory. We'll just flip that over, get you persistent, there you go. That's a big reaction on persistent, 9% growth on the top line, quarter on quarter, no IT company has been able to do that. Okay, uh, that's the news making list, let's move beyond news. Uh, you've got a little bit of subdued start on an HDIL, Lanko's a little quiet, Kingfisher's down about 4 odd percent for the time being. Dish TV is continuing its run, 1.5% up uh, as we see it. Subex is off to a pretty good start as well. Uh, by the way, Indian hotels is trading on good volumes, one would have to say. So the fall that's coming in, trading activity on the counter has definitely picked up today compared to where it uh, usually has been. Well, there's also Z News that's jumped up quite well on back of uh, very strong numbers and Tata and Lexi. Well, uh, both those counters, it's up about 2%, it's not so bad. And just to mention the dollar rupee pair, and I think this is turning out to be a bit of a worrisome picture. The Delphi is down nearly 7 tenths of percent, 53.76 now. So it seems like it is demand coming in from all importers. Remember, it is a holiday shopping week next week. So month end buying is already picking up. There is that FCCB redemption as well. And most traders on the street are not ruling our levels of 54 being tested on the dollar rupee pair before the month comes to an end. So that's the picture, and it's not pretty. That much we can assure you this morning. Well, let's go back to um, Mr. Gautrich, who we've been chatting to uh, just a few minutes ago. Uh, Mr. Gautrich, uh, what has been, been the trend in pricing? I mean, have you been able to hike prices in the last couple of months? I think we have seen moderate price increases in most markets. It's been sharper in some areas. For example, our Gurgaon project, uh, we sold at a rate that was quite substantially higher than we would have planned uh, even, say, six months before that. But even in markets where, where volumes haven't been as great, like the Mumbai market, um, we've seen very positive responses to our projects. Our project in Vikroli, for example, is today selling at a price that's about 30% higher um, than the price we launched it at about almost exactly now one year ago. Um, and we've been able to sell reasonably good volumes there. So I think, you know, broadly, uh, prices have also seen uh, reasonable momentum. Uh, keep in mind also, though, that uh, the cost uh, structure for almost all developers has been under pressure over the last couple of years, both in the form of input costs, clearly things like steel and cement, also, of course, the cost of actually constructing it in form of uh, construction labor, uh, but also in, in terms of financing costs have all gotten more expensive. So I think um, on balance, some amount of price escalation uh, was warranted uh, from that perspective. Uh, but clearly, I think um, 
where we'd like to see things get even better than they have been is on the volume front. Uh, you know, I think pricing in most Indian cities is reasonable and has kept pace with uh, the kind of inflation we've seen. But I think what has not been uh, uh, very encouraging over the last year has to, to be is that the national data is showing that in almost all cities, volumes um, are actually down. While we as a company have been able to, because we've had a lot of new projects added and a lot of new launches, um, uh, planned, we've been able to show growth. I think from a, a sector perspective, it would be great to see uh, volumes return. Purusha, how is the volume pricing balance then playing out? I mean, you've got festive season around the corner, Diwali is coming up. Will developers really, I mean, will you guys be willing to hold on to prices to, of course, give volumes a boost? I think certainly for us at Goodrich Properties, uh, volume is the bigger focus. Of course, we need to have prices that allow us to make some money. But I think clearly the way we feel we can grow our business and, and the way we think we can create over time a truly uh, you know, world-class and sizable real estate development company is by achieving consistency and consistent growth uh, in volume. So I think that is our priority. Um, you know, each developer would have a different strategy. Each project may have a different strategy. If you have a very small project that's very premium, you may want to, you know, sell quite slowly and play for margins. You, on a, on a more, uh, uh, you know, mid-income uh, housing project, you may want to push for more volume. So I think there are some inherent differences there. But my, uh, I think my best hope for the industry would be that prices continue uh, to increase gradually along with inflation, but that we see a very, very uh, sharp increase in the kind of volumes being sold. And I think that is what ultimately will be good uh, for all stakeholders in the sector, whether it is developers, whether it's the government, um, or of course ultimately the customers. And I think there is huge inherent demand for real estate. So whatever we say about, you know, weakened economic conditions, why pricing, we must forget that housing is a very basic need and a very basic desire for, for everyone. So I think um, the access to that housing is something that's very important. And if that can happen through uh, lower interest rates and an improved um, economic climate, I think that again will be beneficial to all stakeholders. Um, Perosha, let's talk about Godrej Properties itself. Now, you're in so many different geographies. You've just launched in Bangalore. You've done your launch in the NCR. Which market are you bullish on? What is your launch pipeline looking like? And allow me to ask you this. There's been a lot of speculation about you doing a deal with HDIL for a development in Bangalore. Is there any truth to that at all? You know, our, our launch calendar over the next six months is perhaps the busiest it's ever been in the history of the company. Um, we have launches, in addition to the two launches we've just done in Bangalore, we have launches in Ahmedabad. We have uh, several launches in Mumbai. We have a launch in Kolkata, launch in Pune, launch in Hyderabad, uh, second phases in, uh, in NCR. So we do have a very, very uh, robust launch calendar in a, in a variety of cities. Um, and I think that will really allow us to, uh, that would really be the driver of our, of our growth over the ne next couple of years. We've been very successful in adding new projects over the last 18 months. We've added about 14 new projects. Most of these projects either have already been launched or will be launched over the next 6 to 12 months. And I think those will be a key driver of our, of our future growth. Uh, on your second question, you know, at any given time, we are talking to a, a huge number of, uh, of potential partners for, for new developments. We, as a matter of policy, uh, you know, make sure that not to comment on anything until a deal is finalized. Um, and, you know, talking about discussions that fell through would, would be, a, a, you know, an unending list because for every successful project, there are at least 10, 20, and uh, maybe even, you know, 50 or 100 discussions that take place. Okay. Um Pirosha, we've been discussing all about the demand supply scenario and how you know improved the market seems to be. But let's look at the ground reality. Liquidity had been a huge issue for the sector over the last one year. Now I know that's not an issue for you at Godrish Properties, <coughs> but speaking about the sector as a whole, is it any easier to access bank funding and financing today than it was, let's say, six months back? You know, it's a, it's a tricky question. As you said, I think we've been uh, relatively advantaged in our ability to access capital, both in the form of equity. Uh, for instance, in March, we did India's first ever institutional placement program. We also recently tied up a partnership to invest in new projects with some leading global investors. Um, and, you know, on the debt side, we have uh, perhaps uh, one of, if not the lowest borrowing costs um, in, the, in the sector. So I think, you know, we've not seen any concerns in that area. Clearly, I think for the sector as a whole, capital availability is a major issue. 
um, I think what has happened is that both equity and debt capital have been relatively difficult to access um, for the sector as a whole. Um, and, you know, hopefully, yes, I, that, that will improve. I think if general economic sentiment improves, um, if interest rates, as we expect them to, start declining, um, certainly I think that will reinvigorate uh, the real estate sector. I think certainly, um, you know, it is a sector that is very cyclical. And um, I, I, I'm quite optimistic that over the next uh, 12 months, we can, we've seen already the bottoming out um, of, of, of the, the curve, and we'll see a, a, a steady improvement going forward. Pirusha, very lastly, before we, of course, wrap up this discussion, do you have any sort of fundraising plans, any project level fundraising that you're looking at? Yeah, we're not looking at any kind of uh, major capital raising over the, the next couple of months. The commercial paper uh, thing you mentioned is, is, is simply another form of, of debt and uh, a way to lower, further lower our average borrowing costs, but that's not, you know, not in any way equity or, or anything like that. The only kind of um, capital that we are, we are open to, which is something that we're always open to, is project level investments, uh, particularly for some of our, our commercial projects. But certainly we're not looking in the very near future at any entity level capital raising. As I mentioned, we've quite successfully raised some capital already over the past few months. Hi, thanks, Adan Parosha. Always great talking to you. So that's perspective coming in and what the real estate space is looking like, whether or not that recent rally in some of these stock, uh, stock prices justifies the actual business. Outlook's positive and Parosha goes is clearly betting big on the festive season. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of First Trade Markets are down to 10%. The rupee continues to look weak.